Welcome to the second part of chapter 5 video for business 7, accounting for small business. So, we covered most of the material in the first part of the video. So, we did with you actually the first objective. I presented to you the 10 column worksheet and we completed a trial balance. And then we talked about three types of adjustments. I want to mention again that all three types of adjustments they will increase our expenses and they will decrease our assets. So for every type of adjustment, your first step was to figure out math, how much of the asset uh, was used, how much of the asset was used during the months, during the period. And then you would debit by that amount, you debit some sort of expense. It would be either supplies expense or rent expense or depreciation expense. And then you would credit an asset supplies or prepaid rent or a contra asset called accumulated depreciation. So some students find this information quite challenging and like I said, mentioned in the first part of the video, uh, our adjustments are very, uh, very fundamental to the study of financial accounting. They will not go away. Here we have three types of adjustments and we will have probably about a dozen of these adjustments in chapter 12 and then you will learn more of them in the future classes. So make sure you understand the, the dynamic behind it. Do not memorize, understand what you're doing, right? So we recorded three uh, ABC, ABC, three adjusting entries right here in this adjustment columns. Again, we debited expenses, which will increase expenses, expenses are plus minus, and we credited assets or contra assets. So this will decrease our assets. And we totaled it up. And now what we're going to do, I mentioned what book value is. You need to know the definition. Book value is the original cost. Like in this example, we purchased equipment by 11,000. I want to remind you how we calculated 183. So we used straight line depreciation. And the formula is cost of the asset minus salvage value divided by useful life. And usually in this class, it will be useful life in months. It could be in years. And so everything will be given to you in this example. It's equipment, which we bought for 11 k $11,000. And my salvage value in this example was zero. And useful life was 60 months. So they told you you're going to use this equipment for five years. And five years multiplied by... 12 months would be 60 months. Or you can first calculate the annual depreciation divided by five years and then take that amount and divide it into 12 months and that gives us $183. So every month the value of equipment loses $183 and it becomes an expense, right? We use up, we use up $183 out of $11,000. And this follows the matching principle um, in GAP because we will be using this equipment for 60 months. So every month I use it, this equipment earns me revenue. So I want to match the amount of expense with the amount of revenue I earn. And we will talk more about it in higher level courses. So the book value is the difference between the original cost and accumulated depreciation. So after one month, the book value is $10,817. But after two months, what happens with accumulated depreciation? It goes up, right? So every month it goes up. So now it would be $366. So after two months, my book value would be $11,000 minus $366 equals... Uh, let me calculate it. I, I can't do it in my head. So after two months, it would be 11,000 minus 366. So it would be 10,634 and so on and so far. So every period accumulated depreciation accumulates, increases and book value decreases. And at the end of the life, the book value will be equal to salvage value. After five years or 60 months, my book value 
has to be equal to salvage value. In this example, it will be 11,000 minus 11,000 equals to zero. So I hope it makes sense. Where do you see this book value? It's reported on the balance sheet. Let me go forward a little bit to the balance sheet and show you. I told you that um, our main asset and contra asset, they always travel together. And so if you look now at the balance sheet, here you are. You can see here, well, they actually didn't list it. It would say equipment less accumulated depreciation, and it will give the difference, which is the book value. Or it should say, if they report it this way, then they should say here, equipment comma net, which means that they are reporting it at the net value, at the difference. Net also means book value. Let me say it like that. Okay. So let me go, go back to where we stopped. And guys, so we're done with adjusting entries. And now we're ready to complete the worksheet, right? So I want to remind you, we just completed the first four columns. We still have six more money columns for the worksheet. So we're already done trial balance and adjustments. And now we're going to complete the entire worksheet. It looks like I said, sometimes it looks massive and intimidating, but it's easy to do. So the next step, we're going to complete adjusted trial balance. So we're going to go and combine trial balance, or I think of it as unadjusted trial balance, in the adjustments columns. If there is no adjustment, like cash, you simply copy it. Accounts receivables, you copy it. But supplies is... 1500 plus minus 500 gives you $1,000, right? If you see prepaid rent positive, it's an asset, credit is negative, new balance is 4000 Accumulated depreciation did not have any balance, and now we credited it by 183 and it has minus plus, so that's the new balance. And so on so far. So accounts payable, you just copy, capital, you copy, but this last three expenses did not have any balances and now after adjustments they have the balances and this is my adjusted trial balance it's just four columns combined my debit is equal to credit i am done with the adjusted trial balance next thing i need to prepare here columns for the income statement and the balance sheet and we will use them to prepare financial statements guys this is very easy to do Find drawing account, drawing, and draw the line under it. So draw the line under it. Take the top, everything at the top, and move it, copy it to the balance sheet. Take the bottom, let me make it blue. Take the bottom, all, everything below drawing, and copy it to the income statement. You just split it, split it like that. So the line under drawing, everything above the line is copied to the balance sheet columns, no thinking, and everything below the line is copied to the income statement columns. And that's what we do right here. Here they are. So again, if you look here, oops, sorry, let me get the pan. If you look at this line, right? Ooh. Everything above it went to the balance sheet. Everything below it went to the income statement. And look, when you total your columns, you will not be equal. And you have to figure out the difference between, you know, income statement columns and the balance sheet columns. Your proof is that the difference between these two and those two columns must be the same. And that difference will represent either net income or net loss. So if you see here, my revenues, 47,000, are higher than my net income. So the difference is 33,667. Why do I put it under the debit column? Because I need both columns to be equal. So when I take total expenses plus net income, I get 4747. And guys, the same story between debit and credit column. Uh, so if you have net income, so this is how I remember it. If I have net income, if you just focus on the last four columns, 
net income goes on the outside. It goes in the debit column of the income statement and it goes in the credit column of the balance sheet. Guys, and the, the other way I remember credit column of the balance sheet because net income increases my capital. How do I increase capital? I credit it because it's minus plus. If you had net loss, so let me make it a different color. If you had net loss, it would go into these inside columns. It would go into the credit column of the income statement and the debit column of the balance sheet because in order to decrease capital, net loss decreases capital, it has to go to the debit column. So net incomes go on the outside. If you have net loss, it would go on the insides. And guys, it completes uh, step four of our accounting cycle. So now I'm ready to take, I have all data necessary. I already know my total expenses, my revenues. I already know my net income. I'm ready to prepare financial statements. So you can prepare financial statements without the worksheet, but the worksheet nicely already sets everything up and then you take data from it and you prepare financial statements. So step number five, prepare financial statements. Guys, they look exactly the same as what we studied in chapter two. This is who, what, when, income statement, period of time, list your revenues first, expenses, but you can see that it has to be done after adjustments. If I did not make adjustments, I would not have had this last three expenses and if i did not have them my total expenses would be understated which would make my net income to be too high and it's not it, it would not no auditors would sign off no banks would accept accounts and statements that are done without adjustments so when i add these uh, expenses my expenses of course my expenses of course go up now so your expenses are higher, which makes your net income go down. And then you take net income, 33667, and you move it right here to the statement of owner's equity. You take capital plus net income, less withdrawals, gives you the ending capital, and then you put it on the balance sheet. So, and when you put the updated ending uh, capital on the balance sheet, your total assets would be equal to total liabilities plus equity. Now, this is called an account form of the balance sheet. It's called an account form of the balance sheet because we list assets next to liabilities plus owner's equity. Usually companies do not use the account form and from now on we're going to use so-called report form of the balance sheet. So all we do here, it's the, the totals are the same. They should be, they should be double underlined oh this is the grand total and this is the grand total but i list uh, liabilities and equity below assets so these are my assets and my grand total and then below it you list liabilities one account owner's equity one account and my second grand total account versus report form of the balance sheet we're not done yet. I want to remind you that a worksheet was just a tool that accountants use. It's not an official part of the record. So uh, it's not a financial statement. It's not a permanent part of the accounting records. It's only a tool. But the adjustments that we already calculated on the worksheet must now become the part of the permanent accounting records. Anytime I want anything to become part of the accounting records, I have to put them in the journal, journalize them, and post them to the ledger. Your ledger accounts now are not updated either. So your ledger accounts, um, such as supply, so accumulated depreciation, are not the same as the amounts you just reported after adjustments in the financial statements. So what we do in step number six of the accounting cycle, we're going to take adjustments from the worksheet and we're going to record them. By that, I mean we're going to put them in the journal, journalize them, and then we're going to copy or post them from the journal to the ledger. So I want to remind you that we had 
three adjustments for supplies, for expired rent, and for depreciation of equipment. And guys, this is how you do it. In the general journal, you had all of your previous regular trans transactions. You do not need to begin a new page. You can skip, uh, simply skip the line and you say adjusting entries. When you say adjusting entries, they do not require any explanation because there are no source documents. And then you list, and look at them, they're all done at the end of the period. And so you list your debits first and credits second. And of course, for all of them, the debits are expense of some sort and expense of some sort. And the credit is an asset, a contra asset. And then of course, you take them, uh, each one of those journal entries, and you post it to the appropriate account in the general ledger. In the general ledger, when you do it, now, we used to live in chapter four, description was left blank because those were regular transactions. Adjustments are unusual transactions, so we actually need to say the word adjusting, or sometimes in accounting, we usually abbreviate it as adjusting journal entry, just like that, A-J-E, and you have your posting reference, uh, you copy the debit right here, and then you have a new balance. And then you take the account number and you cross-reference on the journal. And then you do the same for supplies, for rent expense, prepaid rent, depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation. After you record all of these adjustments, then your books are up to date with the, re with the financial statements and with the worksheet. Okay, so this is chapter five. We talked about the 10 column worksheet. We described and learned how to record three types of adjustments. Adjustments for supplies, prepaid expenses. I just showed you prepaid rent, but it could be prepaid insurance or prepaid advertising and depreciation. You learned the formula for the straight line method of depreciation. And we talked about salvage value a new contra asset account called accumulated depreciation. You learned what the book value is, your initial cost, uh, your cost minus uh, accumulated depreciation. We talked about how to complete the worksheet and where we will see the net income or the net loss amounts. We prepared financial statements from the worksheet and you looked at the account versus report form of the balance sheet. At the end, we journalized and posted adjusted entries to the journal and the ledger. Thank you so much.